right, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Oh, and this is my other brother Daryl's manservant, Charles. I, uh, I knew you'd be the first brother to get a manservant. Larry, where did Charles come from? We found him on our doorstep when we came home. We are lucky to find a newspaper on our doorstep. Honey, Daryl's always finding newspapers on your doorstep. Uh, before this conversation becomes interminable, I was a birthday gift from Daryl's great aunt, Priscilla. Yeah, Daryl's her favorite. She's always been a sucker for his Sholem Aleichem like folksy humor. <laughs> Well, she, she sounds like a very generous and wacky woman. Larry, what's Daryl going to do with a manservant? He hasn't the foggiest. I draw baths. I look after the master's clothing. I announce visitors. In general, I bottle. Are you any good at turtle stomp? <laughs> I should think not, no. That's what we were afraid of. Oh, I picked uh, Daryl, that's also what a manservant does. He picks things off one's clothes. I guess Charles will come in handy. Those turtle pieces stick like glue. <laughs> come on, Daryl. Charles. Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. And this is my other brother Daryl's second. Hi, guys. What can we do for you? We've come for more advice. But first, we'd like to congratulate Miss Joanna on her softcore porno real estate show. Thank you. I saw there was a need for it, and with Dick's encouragement, I'm filling it. Uh, I see Daryl, but where is, where is Daryl? The master is soaking in a bubble bath at present, sir. When he's all soft and rosy, Charles will dry him off, then read to him till he falls asleep. As far as Master Darrell is concerned, the cat in the hat cannot come back too many times. <laughs> I must get back before his bubbles disappear. Don't, uh... Don't you think you're spoiling him? Actually, I'm the one who prefers there be bubbles left. <laughs> Dick, we're at our wits' end. Daryl doesn't do anything for himself anymore. He's losing his naturally sinewy physique. That, that would be the real tragedy in all of this. What do you suggest we do? Uh, can I answer a question with, with a question? Did you watch my show? Can I answer that question with another question? What does that have to do with Daryl? No, uh, nothing. We thought as much. Goodbye. <laughs> Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. And appearing in public once again is my other brother, Daryl. We've come to inquire if you've seen a manservant. Why, are you missing one? <laughs> it seems Charles has run off. I should have seen it coming. He had this weird look in his eyes when he was flossing Daryl. Maybe it's for the best. He's picking up all sorts of annoying habits from that Charles. Come on, Daryl. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Hi, fellas. Look, Daryl, roof and tar. I told you that was George behind the rubber nose and glasses. What's, uh, what's, what's going on, fellas? Well, we're trying to lift Daryl's spirits. We used to take him to the petting zoo, but we've been banned since Daryl got caught shaving his name on a llama. <laughs> Wasn't that during their two-week llama-rama? <laughs> Why is Daryl so depressed? Well, whereas Daryl and I enjoy the simple pleasures of life, like folk dancing and uh, ferret tug, <laughs> Daryl here would rather slop his mind with something less strenuous. In short, a heart-popping, down-and-dirty game of chess. 
You know, Dick was on his high school chess team. Well, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Listen, Daryl, I think I hear the sound of the gauntlet being heaved in your direction. <laughs> Guys, I haven't, uh, I haven't played chess since we, we snared the state championship, so I, you know, it might, it might be a little rusty. Oh, go on, honey, it'll be fun. And if he happens to slaughter you, so what? It's not like he's going to tell anyone. <laughs> okay, okay, Daryl, you're on. Uh... I should warn you, I was awarded the, the Bronze Rook three years running. Uh, choose for first move? On the street, it's whoever lets a match burn closest to his fingers without screaming. Why, why, don't, why don't I just, just go first? Wow, Dick, you are good. <laughs> George, that is the most common opening move in chess. And you can spout off statistics, too. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. Aren't you going to stay and watch the game? And leave those ferrets untugged? Priorities, George. <laughs> I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Hi, fellas. What's new? It seems a few years back we borrowed some sugar from you and never returned it. <laughs> Today, as serendipity would have it, Daryl found it when he inadvertently reached into the wrong pocket for his tube of Oragel. Uh, guys, why don't, why don't you just, just keep the sugar? Uh, Joanna and I recently decided to become a uh, Hypoglycemic. We felt it was time. Well, you know where it is if you start to get dizzy. <laughs> Excuse me, but I can't help noticing you pay your own gas bill. Of course, who else would pay it? Johnny Carson pays ours. <laughs> Johnny Carson, the, the one that hosts The Tonight Show? He has time to do both things. It only takes a few minutes to write a check. And he does have his Monday nights off. Some, somehow I'm skeptical. I'll show you the TV guide. <laughs> no, I, I mean about Johnny Carson paying their gas bill. I don't think Dick believes this. No, I, I'm just saying it, you know, it seems far-fetched, you know. You know, maybe if you had said Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> We've got better things to do than stand here and be humored by an ersatz hypoglycemic. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. I guess there's no point in telling him who pays our cable bill. Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. And this, for your inspection, is five years' worth of gas bill receipts. Johnny Carson paid this gas bill. He, he wrote this? No, I did. Well, Larry, that, that doesn't prove that he pays your gas bill. I see. So you're implying that we'd mess up a perfectly good gas bill just to pull off an elaborate hoax. <laughs> We're shocked. In fact, Daryl can't even look you in the eye. And it has nothing to do with that sty of his. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. And here's Mr. Carson. You're, you're, John, you're Johnny Carson. And you're the Yahoo that called my friend Larry a liar. <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, uh, do, do you really pay, pay their gas bill? Hey, Sparky, do I tell you what to do with your money? <laughs> Easy, Johnny, he ain't worth it. 
Come on, Daryl. We got to get Mr. Carson on that noonie shuttle back to Burbank. Right. <laughs> you know what really irks me about people like you? All you ever do is take, take, take. <laughs> Why don't you give once in a while? <laughs> cheap, 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 cheap. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. What were those names again? Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other... Larry, I was just playing with you. I see. Huh? Daryl says if the playfulness ain't out of your system yet, he ain't adverse to having his tummy tickled. I think the moment has passed. Besides a quick tickle, what, what can we do for you guys? We've come for some of your sage advice. Word has trickled down to us that a couple of scientists in Utah, home of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and the underrated Jimmy Osmond, <laughs> are taking credit for an experiment that we performed. Is it the one where you tried to figure out why popcorn pops but cottage cheese doesn't? <laughs> no. And for future reference, we're no longer involved in the study of food paradoxes. <laughs> this time, we created cold fusion in a bottle. <laughs> the hard part was emptying out the ketchup. Yeah, I heard the scientists in Utah use the, the wide neck bottles. Well, luckily, Daryl here has that long reptilian tongue of his. <laughs> Our question is, should we sue? Well, do, do you have a patent on your experiment? Of course. We always patent our nuclear breakthroughs. <laughs> also, our line of sugarless beaver pops. <laughs> okay, what's going on? Every time I say the word patent, you two stare at the floor. You what? Seems my brothers didn't mail in the patent after all. Instead of trading our cow for stamps at the post office, they traded her for three magic beans. Now, a guy outside sells them. It's a clever scam. He stands by this really tall beanstalk. Anyone could fall for it. Well, without a patent, the Nobel Prize Committee will be passing us over once again. Come on, Daryl. Let's go home and finish off that three magic bean salad. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. What's, what's with the limp salute? Is Daryl mourning the demise of Maison Hubert? Oui. <laughs> but he also has a far more personal problem. And that is? He wants fat lips. <laughs> get, get in line. <laughs> After years of watching the ladies at the Department of Motor Vehicles flock to the full and voluptuous lips of Daryl. <laughs> Daryl here has begun to question the effectiveness of his own puny pair. They look fine to me. Would you like them firmly pressed against your own? <laughs> no. Then you can see Daryl's predicament. Fellas, being the possessor of prodigious puckers, let me offer you a little lip service. <laughs> Collagen injections. The new age cure for the kissing impaired. <laughs> Was good enough for uh, Cannes Film Festival Award winner Barbara Hershey. <laughs> it's your call, you liplessness. <laughs> then let the injections begin. See you boys in con. Hi. Am I glad to see a familiar... <laughs> a pricey specialist forced Daryl to cut his dream in half. We should have picked our own doctor and not listened to Ivana Trump. <laughs> uh, why don't you guys uh, stay here and tell me the, the whole story, even if it 
it means, you know, starting with, with your birth. <laughs> Another time, perhaps, we just stopped by to get a reaction to Daryl's lip from the gentler sex. Is Miss Joanna available for a quick swoon? No, she's, 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 at, she's at the mall. Come on, Daryl. Let's go see if your lip gets a rise out of them babes at the DMV. What happened to Daryl's lip? He had it removed. <laughs> he discovered it's not the size of a man's lip the gals at the DMV are interested in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, talk around the locker room. You know, I, I, I heard that uh, what motor vehicle women r really love is a, a guy who's sensitive, you know, a guy who's, who's not afraid to cry. They should have been there when the doctor ripped Daryl's lip off. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet they're kicking themselves. <laughs> anyway, what really gets them DMV babes revved up ain't lips at all. It's these. Whip them out, Daryl. <laughs> Let's get a move on. Those lovelies in license renewal punch out at 4.30. <laughs> Talk about your unsettling spectacles. I know, I know. I normally sit over there, and now I'm sitting here. I just felt capricious, okay? I was alluding to the chunk of blueberry stuck to your front tooth. <laughs> no, Daryl. You let Dick lick off that blueberry himself. <laughs> See, Daryl, you were wrong. Just because Michael's taken on Miss Stephanie's name doesn't mean he's turned into a femme fatale. <laughs> Although, with his legs crossed in that sultry manner, he does resemble a young Shirley Booth. Question. <clears throat> Would you quirky crossbred country kinsmen consider mangling your monikers for a mansion on the mount? <laughs> First off, kudos on your spectacular, if not excessive, alliterative skills. <laughs> Your query is moot, however. Since years ago, Daryl altered his given name to avoid confusion both at home and at obedience school. What, what did Daryl's name used to be? Larry. <laughs> so you guys do approve of me taking the Vander Kellen name? What? We thought you were taking Miss Stephanie's lilting first name. <laughs> Selling your last name would mean losing your identity and integrity. We'd sooner brush our teeth than change our last name. Come on, Daryl. I said, come on, Daryl. Oh. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other... My other brother, Daryl, has cut short my intro due to his astonishment in seeing the signet ring of the Lord of Stumpworth on Thames. How did you know? Daryl minored in royal genealogy when he was on his rowing scholarship at Oxford. Funny, I always had Daryl pegged as a, a Cambridge man. No, that was Daryl here. Imagine the ribbing my brothers gave me when I ended up going to Montpelier Trade Tech. Daryl, I can't believe I'm asking, but can you tell if this is authentic? It's legit, all right. Daryl would recognize the Queen's tea stains anywhere. Can I... I really am the Lord of Stumpworth on Thames?